So I'm just approaching beautiful bay in Northland, New Zealand and uh, I thought I'd bring you along. I want to collect some seaweed in this bucket here and um, it's as part of my uh, materials build for um, uh, building a compost, uh, yeah, rebuilding uh, with multiple layers of free material. So here we are, sunny location. So I'm hoping I'm going to find some seaweed. Hmm, it's looking rather barren. That's not what I was hoping for. There's been no storms, so I guess that's. Yeah, that's not what I'm going to find. It's probably going to be low tide in the next hour or so. And, uh... Oh, there's, you know what? There's a few scraps here. Not much, but they'll make a difference. So I'll gather what I can. So, yeah, it doesn't really matter what type of seaweed. I think it's just a matter of adding the nutrients to the to the garden so yeah I'll just gather up I'm not gonna get a lot but it's better than nothing the shells are beautiful it's like predominantly what the beach is made of and uh, hence the sand color I do know that a lot of these are pippies and I think there are scallops amongst them as well um, I think that's, mm, no, that's not a scallop. But these are definitely a lot of pippies in here, which clearly wash up, but they're really good eating as well. I've got another project. I've got a, it's a lamp base and it's, I think it's teak. It's an elephant with the raised trunk. And so the, the trunk is sort of where the bulb comes out of, the top of that. And, <coughs> It did have tusks and toenails, and I think they I think they were made of bone. I'm pretty sure that they weren't ivory. Um, but anyway, uh, they're missing, and well, predominantly they're all missing. But um, it was suggested that I could make uh, you know new toenails and tusks out of shells, and I'm just looking at these really. These nice thick um, shells which could do really well. So I've got quite a, a stack here. It's dried so it's you know could c compress down but um, yeah I think I'll get a little bit more and then I'll head back. Now this uh, wet kelp I guess it is. Um, yeah, you can see how it's come off the rocks, but it's a lovely, I was sort of, I guess, expecting to find more of this sort of quantity, but that's okay. What I found is, is good for my purpose, and uh, yeah, I think that's a really good note to end on. Um, nice stash, and it'll really contribute to the nutrients of the garden. Um, so, onward. It's so satisfying creating soil growing food like it's just magic and you know what it gives critters homes <laughs> and they love it the worms love it and this is just a beautiful beautiful morning really stunning hi everyone um as promised i uh, am going to turn my compost and uh well i'm going to empty most of it out and rebuild with um, different materials and then put the uh, broken down compost um, with the worms into the small vegetable patch and um, yeah just get the new the new batch going to make more soil so here is the overdue uh, the compost that is overdue for turning and uh, rebuilding um, so this is a little kitchen green waste um, and I'm using the brown paper bags to uh, serve as leaf litter and to bulk, help bulk up the compost and 
um, will create some uh, help with the, 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 the rebuilding of the soil. Um, down here I've got grass clippings and a mix with um, also other garden waste. No weeds though, just, just stuff that I know won't sprout and do the wrong thing and thrive when it's not supposed to. So this is, yeah, I've just cut up like iris leaves and uh, just different plant matter. Um, yeah, everything that, that'll, there's a little bit of woody stuff in there, but yeah, just stuff that'll break down. And then here is the bucket of um, seaweed that I collected this morning. Um, and so I'm going to cut that up with the, um, try the hedge clippers or the secateurs, um, and then just sort of coarsely chop it and sprinkle that throughout the compost as I go. And then uh, I'll have to rinse them and oil them up so they don't rust, uh, since this is covered in salt and sand. And then I've got these tools here. On the left is just a, a garden fork, which I like to use to lift material. Um, like it'll be, I find it easier to sort of dig in and take out so all that top material and then when I get down to the soil um, I find that the fork is the tines are less disruptive to the worms because using the shovel tends to chop the worms which ideally you don't want to do I mean obviously they're going to get disturbed but um, it just is a little kinder to them and uh, so I'm going to use the shovel to dig out some of the old soil out of the veggie patch and then I'll bring that back over here and I'll sprinkle that in a layer um, as I build the, the compost bin up again. So it's kind of like making lasagna in your garden as it were. Um, and I've got the tarp down here to put that garden waste somewhere else as well because I need to get it out of the way in order to source the lovely soil which is probably at least in the bottom half if not lower um, and another reason I know I need to get going is because things are sprouting out the side I've actually pulled off um, this is actually avocado seeds sprouting and once they get going they are tough to get out again so and this is full of avocado seeds so I know it's well overdue so this is the modest veggie bed which is looking pretty dry at the moment um it's got still got basil which is doing well uh chinese celery um i might take out i don't know if i will take out one of those they are they're quite nice in stir fry or um just even i chop them up and have them with my lunch kind of a salad thing and there's italian parsley and beans which runner beans which are in a pot I'm not sure how they'll do and at the back there is the, the perpetual spinach or it's a, like a silver beet um, and spinach cross so it's kind of like yeah tough spinach but it it's quite nice and it just keeps growing right they're a little moth-eaten because the caterpillars um, get into it and I've got these hoops here because when I'm done planting and I've put these seedlings in, which I've just watered. They've been here nearly a week, so they're overdue um, to be put in the ground. So I've got lettuce and arugula, or rocket, and uh, just some herbs here. But I've got this um, netting, which I'm going to put over the hoops, because firstly the white butterfly, which lays its eggs, and then caterpillars eat the veggies, but also... We've got the blackbird, which is not indigenous to New Zealand, but um, it's common. And uh, they're kind of like chickens in your garden. They scrap, scrape and kind of dig things up. And if I'm putting a whole lot of compost, which is riddled with earthworms, they'll be in there having a feast and then the worms won't get a chance to do their job in the garden. So I'm going to be putting this net over it's a bit fiddly and it's a bit of a pain to sort of lift it up and put it down you know looking for veggies uh, but anyway I do it initially while the seedlings are small because also the birds once they get dug in uh, dig in for the worms they'll be disrupting the seedlings and, and 
that's not going to be any good so yeah uh, sort of a two-step process dig out the compost then come and get soil from here and then transfer the good soil into here and plant seedlings and then rebuild the, the uh, compost bin doing their job and this is quite wet but there's just tons of them in here so as you can probably tell we like to eat a lot of avocados um, every day they grow up here they're prolific they're not expensive well, they're not cheap at the moment but they're not expensive and uh, yeah and eggshells so the yeah the avocado um, skins take a while to break down so this is going to be somewhat of a chunky kind of compost in the garden but um, it works veggies grow and and like I said I'm doing what I can with what I have right now so anyway on to the seaweed cutting I understand that this is incredibly time consuming the way I'm doing this but um, it's kind of small scale for now and um, the seaweed is dry so it's a lot harder to cut than if it was wet. But I just want to get it sort of chunky and so that I can use it sparingly in the compost rebuild. Nearly there. So there you have it, a labour intensive bucket of seaweed. got to be about 80 years old he was a dairy farmer my father grew up on a dairy farm and it's well worn but it has a nice sharp edge and uh, I really like it it's my dad used to use it and I hope to inherit it one day So I've just sort of dug out where there's nothing planted and the soil is fairly depleted um, and I'll use that in the compost rebuild but I will spread more of the fertile compost soil um, everywhere um, and then this this um, these areas where I've, I've dug out I'll, I'll be able to plant some more seedlings I do intend to get more seedlings hopefully soon um, some sort of winter crop greens basically there's no not doing any root crops or anything like that it's just not the space or the yeah you need to take time to build the soil for that and it's this is not really the time for that um, so yeah just keeping it simple um, there is a lot of leaf litter in here which I could remove at this point but it's it's what you know it's breaking down and it it just helps build things and it's kind of a you know no fuss situation here I'm um, just trying to 
create something that's ongoing and small scale, easy to maintenance, uh, easy to care for, low maintenance. Um, so yeah, this is the the shovel. I'm not sure if it came in the shop very well before, but um, yeah, it was my grandfather's and it's made in England, so it would have been imported way back when. Um, and yeah, it's just got it's just got a nice thin edge which digs well, and uh, yeah, just a, a D handle on it. Um, yeah, so a nice piece of equipment. I was told a really good idea actually um, about avocado pits is that obviously before they go to the compost right when you've used them in the kitchen you can dry them and then um, if you have a Vitamix or something similar that's um, you know super high speed super strong and it can grind them into a flour and you can make avocado seed flour, which I thought was a brilliant idea. But at this point, I don't have. And there's a worm making his way, looking for somewhere. Yeah, anyway, I'll put him in the compost. So there's the depleted soil. There's the clearly not broken down. And, and that pile there, I'm going to transfer into here and then go back around to um, the veggie bed and uh, yeah so I'm going to dig this up with the fork and put it in the wheelbarrow. I also realize that the way I'm going about this is quite labor intensive. The ideal would be to have like a three pallet compost bins so when you fill one with the lasagna method then you move on to the next one and then you would have like a pile of resources readily available to build as you go um, but due to limited space and um, time generally and uh, limited resources it's yeah it's just sort of a, a labor intensive moment but it works for now so you can see that the soil is, um, it's got a, a refined texture to it once I get lower down. Um, and it's, yeah, it's just really rich with life. Um, and uh, so I'm going to keep adding to it. Um, I think I'm going to move towards using the shovel now because it's so loose that I'm just not picking anything up with the fork. So. I shall continue with the shovel. So I started this without the frame on just to give you an idea of the process and then I'll continue building with the frame on. Um, I think because it's been so dry that a lot of the worms have gone deeper in the ground. Um, and But I definitely got plenty for the veggie plot. Um, but yeah, they're just, they're, they've gone down. So I've added water and that'll just help with the breakdown process so yeah it's sort of a you know bit of unbroken down kitchen waste bit of um, compost soil bit of depleted soil bit of green matter um, oh and key ingredient is a sprinkling of seaweed in there so I will just 
you know, spread it around a bit. And uh, yeah, so I'll put the frame on and then I'll be able to pack the compost bin further out to the perimeter of the box. Um, but it gives you an idea. And then the idea would be just to leave this alone for several months. But um, because it's relatively small and we eat a lot of fresh fruit and vegetables it gets filled up pretty quick and I think I think I'm going to wave the white flag on putting avocado pits in the compost going to put the six lettuce seedlings at the back and then the arugula or rocket just going to um, kind of weave it through the uh, Chinese celery and uh, yeah it's going to be a little bit random and then I've still got space to get some other greens like maybe kale or bok choy or something. Really delicate root systems on the arugula so I'm not going to break them up, I'm just going to leave them in their bundles. So as you can see it's all a little rough and ready but uh, the intention is there. Uh, I've got the arugula in, got three, one under there, three there and three there and then the six lettuce together over here and that still leaves room for other two or three other punnets of um greens so here's the net over the uh veggie plot it makes getting vegetables kind of fiddly but until the seedlings are established and the soil settles a bit um i'll leave it on I ended up wetting down this whole area and including the bin itself inside and so I put the lid back on and still got the other green matter and uh, old soil to add as I add to the compost bin. Thanks for being here today and watching my video on the compost rebuild. I hope you got something out of it. I certainly did. I don't need to Put avocado pits in my compost anymore especially when I leave it too long that is the problem basically um, and yeah so thanks for being here and I'll I look forward to bringing you some more informative videos